So on June 6, Apple showcased its latest updates for iOS, macOS, watchOS, iPadOS, and more, building upon the theme of productivity from last year alongside a focus on personalization. Now, all of these are scheduled to release later this year, but there will be a public beta for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS toward next month of July, so you'll be able to take a sneak peek at these new updates. So with this in mind, here's a few new features from WWDC that will benefit your device. So first of all, the lock screen in iPhone. So it's seen a major redesign in iOS 16. It's inspired by how users can create their own Apple Watch face layouts. So customization is everywhere here. So if you want to create a lock screen of six emojis and four widgets that's placed on top of your clock, It'll be a hideous mess, but consider it done. So there are three different kinds of widgets. So there is circular, similar to the Apple Watch, rectangular, which kind of like goes down the uh, time and dates, and also inline widgets. So they can be placed above or below the date as well. So up to four widgets that you can place here as well. There's also another widget that's gonna be placed below the lock screen as well called live activities, which can track a shopping order, a workout, a takeaway, and plenty more but that is going to launch after iOS 16 instead. So it's not quite done yet. Now, Stage Manager is coming to both macOS and iPadOS, but arguably it's on the iPad where it's most important because it brings a tablet to a desktop age at last. So it's a take on multitasking, which is where it can do different apps at once. And while it works great in macOS, uh, the iPad version allows you to have up to four apps running all at the same time and better yet, external display support. So you can hook your iPad up to your massive 32 inch monitor and the iPad will be able to work with that, not a problem at all. Now CarPlay made a surprising next generation tease, which is unlike Apple, but still it didn't make me think that it was the highlight of the event because it takes over entire dashboards of the car instead, not just one little screen like a tablet. And it means that you can get speedometers, widget showcases in the details of the trip that you're going to, Stay of your home, smart devices, I mean, the lot. It's truly a next generation thing. And as far as we're concerned, this speaks to the future of Apple's plans for the car itself. So messages is finally seeing a bit of a focus in collaboration, where you can invite contacts to work on documents and presentations, and any updates will show in your chats. There's also the ability to finally edit a sent message or undo sending a message for up to 15 minutes. So if you kind of like want to just try and retract that, hey, Hun, how you doing? You can do it, it's fine. But it is Apple device to Apple device. You can't do this between an Apple device and an Android phone. Not yet anyway, but we'll see. Uh, a big one as well is family safety. So that's seen another redesign uh, where it's going to be easier for parents to have more age appropriate content that's set on uh, their kids' content and you can respond to screen time requests in messages. So if they just wanna play you know, Roblox a little bit more, you can grant it in messages now. It's not a problem there. And there's also a family checklist feature, a really useful bit where you can make it easier to make sure that everything that you've set for your child is there and ready to go for their iPhone or iPad or Mac. It's all good. And also there's a new thing as well for photos it's called iCloud Shared Photo Library, which is where you can set up a library in this family area and you can take photos, you can have them saved directly to this library, and anyone in this library will be able to see these photos as well on their device straight away, wherever they are. Really useful. Uh, mail, finally catching up to some of the mail apps. So you can do scheduled sends. So you can send an email far in the future if you wanted to. You can undo a send up to 15 minutes once again. Um, it's, the search is redesigned as well, so it's much faster as well. It's improvements all around. Now, watch OS 9. Lots of little new features here, definitely like a lot of new watch faces, the more detailed workouts, statuses. But the big one is a medication app. So there's a new medication app on watchOS and iOS, but it's watchOS 9 where it really kind of like makes itself shine. So you can put in the medication and the vitamins that you have into this app and it will remind you when to take them. And you can also check it off that you have taken them throughout the day as well. It'll give you reminders as well. So it'll be really helpful in making sure that you're taking those medications at the right time as well. So your doctor's gonna be happy. So that's the main thing. Now there's another one, which is gaming on Mac, which is an interesting one. And Capcom uh, visited the stage at WWDC to say that Resident Evil Village, the eighth installments in Resident Evil franchise is coming to the Mac. 
And this is due to something called Metal 3, which allows developers to easily port over their games to the Mac and iPad. And because of this, No Man's Sky is also coming to the Mac and iPad as well. So that'll be an interesting thing. Maybe we'll see some other games. Maybe we'll see more Resident Evil games. Street Fighter, who knows? Maybe on Onimusha. Uh, another one is Continuity Camera. Now that was a bit of a curveball because you can use an iPhone 11 or above to clip to your MacBook or iMac and use it as a webcam. So it feels like it's almost Apple's admission that Mac webcams are not the greatest. And now you can have this FaceTime call with your other half in 4K, thanks to your iPhone 13 Pro. And there's a final one, which is, so personalized spatial audio um, was another surprise of the keynotes, where the true depth camera, that's the front cameras of your iPhone, where it will be able to scan your ear and analyze their shape. So this will generate a spatial audio that's personalized for you and your ears. And it means that you'll be able to get the best sound out of the tracks of your Spy Skills albums or Beatles albums on Apple Music. So Apple says, so towards the end of the year, look forward to bringing up your iPhone to the ear and scanning it away. It's gonna be a great time towards the end of the year. So this is the new start of the features that come into iOS 16, iPad OS 16, Mac OS Ventura and more and it was improvements across the board. It does feel like the part two of productivity features that are brought last year with all the other updates in 2021. But there's also a massive focus on personalization, making sure that the iPhone, the Mac, the iPad is relevant to you. And I think that's a big thing from Apple now, which is great to see. But regardless, even if I use an Apple device for an hour a day or every hour of a day, I'm sure you're gonna find a feature that's gonna be beneficial to you. So expect to see these updates arrive on your iPhone, iPad, Watch and Mac towards the end of this year.